We do want to direct you down star 446 hash. You pick the range of the numbers 1 to 39, and then you also get to win big 20 times, 40 times, and 400 times your stake. And you also get to win cash every evening at 7 p.m., and then also on Sundays at 6 p.m. Early bets also love day watch up money. And at 10 a.m., there's the draw. So again, you make use of that short code star 446 hash. Choose the range of the numbers 1 to 39 win the same multiples 20 times, 40 times, 400 times your stake. You can also play online, so you log on to dewa-nla.com and get the latest. For those who have joined us, let me just introduce uh, quickly for you and um, communicating for the campaign team of Nanado Dankwe Kufado, no, of Dr. Mahmoud Dubao. Mia DMB, it is possible 2024. Remember, we just have 23 days to that election vigorously campaigning in the Ashanti region and then also others also doing in other parts of the country. Ellen Amadeko is right here. Good morning to you. Good morning. Okay. And then also we have uh, Beatrice Sanan. And Beatrice Sanan is also a legal practitioner but also a deputy uh, spokesperson for the John Mahama campaign as well. Good morning to you. Good morning, Roland. Okay. Rhoda Linayana is with the Alliance for Revolutionary Change. And uh, they formed the alliance uh, together with the Movement for Change, among many others. So well represented in their gear. Oli Beatrice and uh, Nane are no, no, no well geared up. Good morning. <laughs> How are you? Good morning. Great, great. <laughs> and yourself? Charlie, uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit uh, under fine. the you weather. Look fine. Yeah, so. You look fine. <laughs> so Nane are chimping jantua. It's a, should you pause? You make sure you pause. Uh, it's a former... Um, General Secretary for the CPP, how are you? I'm fine. You are in red and blue. Yes. I actually love red and blue. I don't know. It's one of my favorite colors. So that's great. <laughs> but uh, So we'll be speaking on a number of issues. We want to, 23 days to the election, assess uh, trust for the Electoral Commission, their preparedness, etc. There have been issues raised about the numbers they've given to the parties and then whether the numbers have been segmented. 18 million people now ready in excess. Point seven, right? Uh, ready for the votes or the December 7 election? What does it mean as well? But this week also has been quite uh, eventful. We had the Supreme Court <laughs> also uh, coming out with the final judgment on the subject. And, uh, well, I guess we have to take a, a look at many others. And, and, and Ellen, if, if you take a look at what the Supreme Court came out with, at, at the end of the day, that is sacrosanct. So the belief is that the Speaker and the and the sites of parliament, especially the NDC side, they need, that's the minority side, they need to adhere to that. How do you think we need to bring everybody together into the house so that we move on with government business? Good morning to my cherished viewers. I, I've said it here once and I'll repeat it again. This particular parliament has been a drama-filled parliament. It started a drama right from their inception and I'm not surprised they are finishing up with the drama. So, um, they have a job to do. Mm. Ghanaians voted for them to do a certain job. So I expect that they will come together and do it. My little issue is that we are, we are three weeks away from an election. True. Sure. Most of the members of parliament are going for re-election. So I, I don't see how they are going to show up in parliament till after the elections. I mean, that's my... My, my personal projections. I honestly, I don't see how they are going to come. So let's see how it goes. Um, I, I'm sure that as it is now, all of them are concentrated. Those who are going for re-election are concentrated on their elections. And I'm sure that after the elections, which is barely 23 days away, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll days. see to the we'll see to the work what, what that has to be done. But uh, um, because we are going for a vote, mm. I think that this particular parliament has not been too helpful for Ghanaians. When you compare them to the other parliaments that have come, they haven't really gotten down to do work. It's been constant, consistent bickering. So as we go into vote, um, I am for, for the MPP. I'm campaigning vigorously for Dr. Baumia. You vote for Dr. Baumia, you vote for the parliamentary candidate of the MPP. Um, it's not by force that you vote for Dr. Baumia. We have to appeal to you to vote for him. Whoever you decide to vote for, I think we should appeal to Ghanaians to vote for the parliamentary candidate of whoever they chose to vote for. Because we cannot afford to have this situation 
in another parliament. We need to get work done. They have shown us that they are not prepared to work together. You're saying that if there so, has to be any composition, it has to be I mean, overwhelming, it should at least for the for, government in power exactly. and then also for those in parliament. Exactly. So, so, so that there's we, can consistency. Get, we can get work done. Parliament is supposed to do certain work. We, we, we pay them to do something. But at first, we know when um, we started this off, it was 137 plus 1 and 137. Mm. Mm. A lot of people had hopes. They were very happy that, um, at least with the parliament split down the middle, they were going to do quite a lot of work and scrutinize a lot of. But, I mean, the last four years have shown us that that, that doesn't work. So, as a politician and, and a politician of the NPP, I think that whoever you vote for, vote for the parliamentary candidate. No skirt and blouse. No, 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 there shouldn't be skirt and blouse. And let whichever party that comes into government, hopefully is the, is the, is the government of Dr. Baumia, have a resounding majority to work with. We cannot afford another four years of this situation. As, as, has the us. campaign been going for Dr. Baumia so far? So far, we are in the Ashanti region. I crisscross between the Ashanti region and the Bunu and Bunu East regions. And we, I, I keep on saying it consistently that we are on the grounds. Um, December 7th, we show everybody the work we have done. We've worked very hard. He's still in the Ashanti region. We we'll finish up in the Ashanti region, and then we we'll move up north again. We are consistent with this. We've been very consistent with this campaign, and we are finishing hard. Well, certainly. And, and Beatrice, what, what, what do you make of the talk that we need to have all sides in Parliament united, even the speaker in the middle at the end of the day, following the Supreme Court ruling? Okay, so Roland, good morning, morning to you and our cherished viewers. This morning, I don't normally do this, but I want to do it. I want to say a very good morning to Madame Lodina Mahama. What did she do? I think that she's proving that you can still be a woman. You can still have a foundation on your face, have a foundation and also transform the lives of other women. Over the last years, I've seen how passionate she's been about women and mortality issues about women who want to birth another life. And so just two days ago, in Atebubu and in Bodom, she commissioned a maternity block for the communities. Mm. Before that, she had done that in Bali. And she went to Ketu North to donate medical supply and then to Tamale North to donate medical supply. I think she's so passionate about the health of women. And I, I am also very passionate because, but for the fact that I had my first baby in a private hospital, I would have lost my life. And so I could see death practically staring me. And so I appreciate it when women go and give birth and then we create that conducive environment for them to come back because i don't think that any woman deserves to lose her life merely because she wanted to give life to another person and i think that on behalf of the many women and the children whose lives she will be saving by these generous act we want to say that we salute her many people have resources they choose to buy expensive bags. They choose to fly presidential private jets. And she having her own personal resources, she could have chosen to buy anything with it because she's not mandated by any law to do this. But it should tell you that it matters who becomes your leader. It matters what the intentions of people are. And so if this is how she's using her personal resources, you can as well guess how she would even use access to resources that does not belong to her. And I think that I salute her wherever she is. We are so proud of her. And I want to encourage her to keep doing more. Now back to the discussion on the table. I think that if there is one thing Parliament is noted for, it's consensus building. And what this impasse should show us is that much as I'm even a lawyer, law does not settle every dispute. In fact, law has traveled so much so that today, emphasis is placed on alternative dispute resolutions. What's your point with this? My point is this is that you can win in the court and still not have what you want. 
I listened to the Chief Justice when she gave the ruling that the plaintiff action succeed. And, that she, and then she said that the decision will be available in the registry of the court. Yesterday, I saw GH1 reporting that that decision was still not ready. I want to read the dissenting opinion of Justice Tanko and Lovelace. I want to read because for me, that dissenting opinion represents the conscience of what many people believe the decision should be. The Supreme Court is not supreme to the Constitution. They cannot assume jurisdiction where the Constitution does not give them. But you know the funny thing? Now there is a Supreme Court decision. What the Supreme Court could not do and cannot do is to compel the Speaker of Parliament to convene a certain of the House. And so if truly the aim was to get Parliament to do business, is Parliament doing business? There is a vast difference between knowledge and wisdom. Sometimes how you apply knowledge is more important than the knowledge acquired. I mean, and, I think, and I think that we've just gone and come back to square one. So where is government business now? But you're a lawyer. You know that the outcome of that Supreme Court judgment or ruling is, is a finality. Yes. Nobody, and they're they, they and, and enjoined by the Constitution to do that. Yes. So nobody is saying so that. So the NDC, uh, they, they are compelled done? to go. What, 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 what have we done? Because who, the way you are talking. <laughs> who, who is compelling us to go away? Who is compelling us? There is no law that compels the NDC to go back to Parliament because a Supreme Court has given its decision. Just like the Supreme Court did not order the Speaker. The Supreme Court did not issue a mandamus compelling the Speaker of Parliament to reconvene the House. At least the, 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 the Chief Justice could only agitate and ask, why is Parliament not sitting? Otherwise, there was nothing she could do. She could only ask that question. I think that what this should teach us in our democracy is that you can use consensus you can use alternative means to resolve disputes. And that when you compel an arm of government to do something which is contrary to what everybody knows, at the end of the day, you come back to zero. Now I've heard some of the MPP people say they want consensus and they think we should sit and talk. What happened to that line of reasoning before they went to the Supreme Court? What happened to it? I think we will be doing ourselves a disservice to be pretending. Nothing has happened. Afenyo Markin has demonstrated that he has no administrative capacity to be the leader of the MPP parliamentary you, 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 you cannot make those remarks against well, Afenyo Markin. Why can't I? Afenyo Markin is a man of his own. He's had his yes, own but, achievements but in life. I said that and he, he's been chosen he has, to lead the caucus I have no doubt about that. he's deemed to be competent. I, I have no doubt about that. That he's the leader of the caucus. He may be a competent leader in their caucus, but he has shown that he does not have the requisite administrative capacity to lead a house on the basis of consensus building. When Osei Chema Nsambonsu was the majority leader, they had even more pressing issues than this. To the extent that even we staged a walkout at the time of passing ELEV, you didn't see this. So what do you think that Osei Chemensa was doing? He, he was exercising leadership. People may not agree with him, but he got the results. What you have? Did you see Afenyo Markin practically ambushing a reporter of CTFM and saying that, address me by the title. Well, that's I, what he said. He I said, said he is more His obsessed. position has always been that he's yes, the majority he's leader. So more we reporters should. By his position. Now he says that the reason is spiritually, when he sits in the seat of the minority, something spiritual will happen. I don't know, because maybe he's a Freemason, he believes in the spiritual world and all that. But how do you reduce governance to your personal spirituality? And that is where we are. So let's not be surprised. Nothing has been solved. And it is in tandem with the MPP's inability to solve every issue from economy to health to agri to any sector. And I mean, why do we even have to? Let's go to our second topic. I think that that is a more important topic to discuss. Uh, <laughs> Rodaline, just your, your, your small words on this, and then we'll move on yes, to the yes. next. Um, good morning to Ghanaians, and good morning to Mr. Alan Chiramatin, wherever you are. I hope you're doing good. Um, you know, I was excited seeing two new faces. Um, the last time it was seven faces that uh, looked rather to me. Uh, Partisan, but uh, two new faces were added to the group. So you uh, mean five? 
Yeah, there were five. And that looked at the odd order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we have five two, which means that there can be discerning voices within the Supreme Court. Um, and that advises me to say that we should be asking the Chief Justice, with all humility, to start using the automated um, technological system of empaneling uh, judges and also fixing up cases. This, I think, for me, uh, will bring us more uh, uh, in terms of trust and um, whatever we would be thinking of the um, Supreme Court. Um, I don't know, but somehow we've not read the reasons given by the various judges. Uh, so it's very difficult to actually um, discuss this issue. But I am excited mm -hmm. that at least there were some discerning voices, and I would love to read those ones. But I would also want to insist mm -hmm. that uh, from now on, uh, the Chief Justice must not empanel people on cases just based on her own um, choices, but it should be done because, um, well, it should be done by electronic system that is in the, in the courts. All right. Please. Uh, how do we build consensus now? Which consensus is that? Consensus is needed because at the end of the day, the ruling has been made or the judgment. And so we need the parliamentarians, but government needs to look at its agent business. The number of items before parliament. Let me say good morning to you and good morning to my sisters and my auntie. And good morning to my brother, Dr. P.Y. Jantua. P.Y., how are you? And my brother, Kwame Jantua. Um, <laughs> what consensus are you talking about? The, the, the MPP, they asked for the reopening of parliament using the constitution. I believe right now the constitution is even tied. How tight? We are just going backwards and forwards about what is in clear language. The act for reopening of parliament, isn't it? Good. The NDC came, but they did not come to the chamber. They walked out because they said they were supposed to sit in a certain place. And spiritually, it was wrong for them to sit in the other place. You see, in this parliament, I'll say it and I'll retreat it and I'll say it again. There's no majority. It is 137, 137 plus one. There's a majority side. Where is the majority side? There's a government side and there's an opposition side. From the very beginning, it was an error for the speaker to allow the independent candidate to stay with them to be majority. An error? But, yes, but he said he bent backwards. He bent backwards so that government business will thrive. Because you see, Roland, if I ask for two dogs and you bring me a dog and a monkey, have you brought me two dogs? Well, do dogs and monkeys that got to do with it. That is what I am saying, that independent and party are not the same. If somebody is independent, another person is from another party, they are not the same. So they cannot add on. Their DNA is not the same. They cannot add on. Do you get me? They cannot add on. They can only do business. A dog and a monkey can play around. But they are not the same. They cannot mate to bring out a produce. So what the independent who should have done was to sit in their place. But let me ask you. Ask me. The former, member of, the, the former um, member of parliament. I mean, he was a former MPP. Former is different from now. But the large number of people who vote for him well, you are, are sympathizers how, how, and how, supporters of, how, how of, of, of the MPP because, in the Ashanti region. Because, you see, the, 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 the vote was divided. That is undeniable. Please. The vote was divided between two people. The MPP person and he himself. But for him to win, it was possible that people from other parties also voted for him because he was an independent candidate. And he was the one they rejected. They said that they cannot do business with him. Yeah, I don't know what is wrong with him. If I were him, I will stay independent forever. I don't know what, why he's rushing to join. And now look at all the problems it has, it has brought to us. Seriously. There is no, there is no majority. So if somebody says that, address me as majority, that majority is a very pathetic one. 
a majority of one when you used to have one six nine and now you have one three seven and you are forcing a one one majority it, it, it's neither here nor there and it's not even your majority this is somebody that you rejected and said you do not want you don't need that person you don't want that person to come close the person was an athema do you get me so the point is that we shouldn't even fight over majority or minority there's none in the house that is why we call it a hank parliament so initially the right thing should have been as um right honorable speaker said it should have been government side and opposition side that is all because you see no matter what it is there's there should be consensus building but now who went who, who went to court Today, Kojon Pieni, one of the very experienced, astute politicians in this country, he said that there was no need for the matter to be taken to court because when you do that, you weaken one arm of government. The other arm of government should not interfere in the process of the other arm of government. And I agree with him. I've said this thing several. But you say that the Supreme Court has ruled. But you see, we need to even look at it very. We shouldn't mix things. The Supreme Court is not telling Parliament to reconvene. Mm? And nobody can force, as Beatrice said, nobody can force any parliamentarian to come to the chamber. People want their seats. They want to win their seats. And backwards and forwards. You see, the people who, it's possible that um, the MPP leader has not traveled beyond his constituency. He's so the he, majority leader. So he doesn't know... He doesn't know how far people travel from the north to come to Accra to attend parliament. So he just calls parliament, I request for a call of the parliament at his whims. I am even surprised at his posture now and his posture then. Why? Is there a now, difference? Yes, now he's... He said he was going to the call for validation no, and the speaker's actions then he, then, were unconstitutional. Then he, then he, was, he started uh, talking about the speaker in any way. He's a dictator, he's this, he's that. Yes, it is there. But no matter what it is, you see, whether we like it or not, Right Honorable Bagman is the Speaker of Parliament. Nancy Pelosi was a thorn in the flesh of um, Trump. She was the Speaker of the House. Do you understand me? So the Speaker of Parliament is not somebody that we can just get up and misbehave. The fact that he's NDC does not mean that he should be treated anyhow. He is the Speaker of Parliament the leader of the house, the second in line as far as the, the, the institutions are concerned. The legislature is the second in line, the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. So you're saying that if, let's say, NDC should not mass up numbers to the house, it's legitimate? Ah, where is the law in this one? I cannot come. I am in my country. Where is the law? You use legitimate, you are talking about law. Hey. Does any law compel anybody to be in parliament? Not a, a champion, champion. Yes, I am telling you because the constitution, this 97, it shows you how you can absent yourself 15 times. It is not yet 15 times. It is not even one time. They came all the way from Boko, from everywhere. And the MPP side said they were not coming because of city. Ghana is not an appendage of the MPP. Ghana is Ghana. Ellen, now let's come to the substantive and talk about um, the Electoral Commission and how we need to perhaps uh, better take a look at its own role that it needs to play 23 days to this election and what our expectation should be, especially now that you have been going around consistently. I think the Electoral Commission has been given a job to do. Mm. And uh, so far, I'll say they are doing their job. What I really don't get, mm. and I spoke to your producers about it, what is this business about not giving accreditation to CSOs. Did they give a reason for it? Because if I remember, and I believe I've been following politics for quite some time, every election, CSOs um, are there. They observe. Or I'm wrong. Maybe I, I'm wrong. But from what I know, CSOs show up. So did they give us a reason why they don't want CSOs to show up at this time? If they don't have any good reason to it, I don't know why they want to change the status quo. I mean, so far, 
we've they've had uh, quite a lot of challenges with this particular election, including the fact that one candidate is dying, and it is a grey area. It's never happened before. Is so it? I think so, but we haven't had an election where one of the presidential candidates had passed on. So it's, it's a new situation that they've gone through. I think they've handled it quite well. So what is this new thing about not giving CSOs accreditation? They should let us know. And CSOs are part of the whole process. They keep an eye on it. And they actually help us when we are done with the elections to know whether it was free and fair. They give their reports. They tell us what happened. And it helps us to better our, our, our next elections. So if the EC has a problem with the CSOs, they should let us know. But I think this blanket ban... I don't think it goes down well with anybody. They should let us know. Otherwise, we should stick to the, 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 the normal stuff that we do during elections. 23 days to elections, you don't want any upheavals. You don't want the whole thing to go smoothly so that when you win, you know you have won. When you lose, you quietly go and sit at home and you help the winner to, 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 to govern the country. Uh, we know that Dr. Baumia is winning, so we are not really interested in any upheavals. We want the thing to go and go smoothly. So please, Electoral Commission, let us know why you don't want CSOs, you don't want to give them accreditation. Why? Mm. I, I just want to know why. Did they give well, any reason? Oh, well, so so the, these are a crop of civil society organizations, not like the regular... CGG. Uh, and so they'll give the CGG ones. They'll give well, them, so so, they'll give so, so we're, we're waiting for the responses from the Electoral Commission, because what... Um, we know is that Kodeo and some of those regular ones would always be in the mix, but s some of them um, may not have the same stature like them. So uh, we well, don't know whether. I, I just think that I mean, people new things come up all the time, new institutions come up all the time. So are we saying that we don't want new CSOs to come up? And if new ones have come up, I mean, when you give them, so you rather work with the old ones than with the new ones. Why don't we also want to train the new ones? Why don't we want them to also show up and also go through the process? Because in the next few elections, they will be the old ones. So I really don't get it. Unless they have a particular reason, they should let us know. If they don't have any particular reason, I think any CSO, that is credible, that has been registered as such, and is interested in monitoring the elections, should be given an accreditation. I mean, it doesn't spoil anything. And as we're going, knowing that the latest Afrobarometer is indicating still public trust for the Electoral Commission is not up to the optimum. How do we balance that going into this election? My dear, public trust for the EC in any elect election, election year will not be 100%. It is how the, the EC behaves and how they, they, they do their things that will make the public trust them. 23 days away from an election. Why do you want to keep some CSOs away? That's my question. Well, if you do this, then the, the, the trust that we are talking about, I mean, people start looking at you with, 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 with some eyes. So please, the EC should let us know why they don't want to give these CSOs accreditation. Is it, is it that it is, they are criminal organizations, they are not properly registered? What is the problem? Mm. If they don't have any problem with it, just the simple mere fact that they are new, Mm. There's nothing wrong with having new people on board. Well, so for me, I, I think this is a needless. They're just bringing, it looks like the EC also wants some attention sometimes, but there are some attention you don't need. The criticism is that the. 23 days to elections. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Why would you want to court controversy again? If their people are interested, you've done their background checks, they can do the job. They, are, they fit into all the legal parameters for a CSO. What is the problem? Mm. Honestly. Vitris, what do you make of this? Especially even the register were told that your party, for example, was raising concern that there was no segregation. Yeah, uh, it was I, whole numbers that were given, etc. I think that Madame Jane Mensah wants a third term for the MPP, even more than Baumia wants. So how do you make those conclusions, Vitris Anand? And, and so allow me to establish that. You see, by her conduct, she had shown that She's more than the annex of the MPP. Jane Mensah is not the only electoral commissioner we have had in Ghana. We've had and conducted elections from 1992. And much as political parties have had issues in the past, 
I think that she exercises the powers given to the commission in the most arbitrary manner, in flagrant breach of Article 296, where if a person has the duty to exercise a discretionary power, he ought to exercise that in a fair, reasonable and candid manner. What has the EC done that you claim is you. not reasonable, it's unfair, it's unfair? From 1992, every time we have conducted an election, there has been a final figure that the political parties agree to that this is the figure. So that even if there has to be a dispute, we dispute a particular figure or results. What you have is that the first time she conducted an election, she changed the results almost five times. Even before you could authenticate release one, you have release two come in. You raise issues about release two. Even you say, oh, disregard release two. We are now bringing. So she does not even have the credibility when it comes to finalizing an election result. Now there is a rationale behind why people must observe an election. It is not for the fun of it that the EC will decide that in my discretion or this morning when I woke up, I think that these people must observe and these people must not observe. There is a rationale. The policy is that we must be able to subject the electoral process to some credibility because the EC is noted for not speaking the truth. When it comes to issues that happen on election day, you remember the Ayawaso West Wagon. When they appeared before the commission, they feign ignorance about things that occurred during the election because their justification was that they did not get the reports from either their officers on the ground or she possibly could not have known. So what election observing does is to bring to fore which places are starting very early because when the NDC raise their concerns, they will say, oh, it's MPP, NDC raising. Then quickly, MPP will say, oh, we disagree with the NDC. And then it is politicized. But what the election observer does is that because they are neither NDC or MPP, they give you a fair and accurate account of what happens so that even in her own interest, if she's interested in conducting a very free and fair election, she will quickly move in to conduct or to correct some of the anomalies. For instance, this is a person who could not conduct a district assembly election. When the day of the election came, they told us, oh, for some reasons we cannot conduct. You can imagine that people were not aware. They will tell you, they will find a reason for you, but for the observation. So it is not subject to her whims and caprice. And you know, the EC in recent times have been using some very flimsy excuses when we raise issues. They will say, oh, it is not the law. Madame J. Manson should know that it is also not the law that she should be given over 10 military men to be protecting her, including taking her to salons. It is not the law, but she has it. And so if the law well, were- Somebody says she's an officer of the state, so- Ah, ten military men. So military, all officers of the states have access to military men who are stationed in their houses, hold their back. Some of the military men who went through all these views have become back holders. Follow her to saloons and things. That is what officers of the state are entitled to. Please, let's get serious. The level of public discourse and governance should not be reduced so low because the MPP has introduced a new law. So she should not be deceived by that military protection she has. That she can sit in the comfort of her office, cause mayhem, do things which she is not allowed to do, and then run under the guise of the commissioner's independence. But I want to send a note of caution to those MPP apparatchiks and appendages at the Electoral Commission that they can but only do what are within their limits of the law. 
and the NDC will resist any attempt to subvert the will of the people and the constitution. And to the many NDC people, I wish I could find my camera and speak to them. To the many NDC people and to the many Ghanaians who hope and they are expectant of the fact that power will change so that the draconian hardship that people have been subjected with, they will have some form of liberation. You have a duty to protect the ballot paper. The law mandates all of us to be observers. And so when you go to your polling station on 7 December to vote, do not leave the polling station. This is where the 24-hour economy will start. When you get tired, call Patrice, your you don't friends decide to come. who stays at the Electoral Commission polling station or not. The it's law, a designated the site law of the EC. does not prohibit us from being within where the EC is not operating. Because you know why? Let me complete my statement and I'll address your concern. Be there. Nobody can ask you to go home as long as you are not doing anything illegal. And you must be there in your numbers. You know why you should be there in your numbers? For two things. First, so that the people that they have stationed to come and do the ballot staffing, which they did in 2020, and which is their best bet and their source of confidence in this 2024 election, they cannot ballot staff. Because they did that in Asin North. In Asin North, when we formed a human war at the electoral or the polling stations, I personally heard a gentleman speak Ghan because it was an Asin North. He assumed nobody could speak Ghan. Calling someone on the phone that with the number of people here, I cannot do what you say I should do. He, he said that I report Ghan? Yes, because I'm Ghan, I speak Ghan. So I reported the gentleman to the police officer and they made sure he never came close. He was even scared. And so the EC and the MPP, they only have one agenda to rig this election. By your vigilance, in Asin North, we saw electoral officers tearing two ballot papers to be given to identifiable party people. It took the vigilance of the NDC to stop it. And I am very confident that people are angry. More than ever, we are vigilant. You see how we have put a lot of pressure by, from auditing of the voter register, from detecting wrong transfers and ballot, I mean, the bloating in the register and all that we have a system that we are using but we call on all Ghanaians to be vigilant to resist this rigging because if the MPP wants to get 12 years in power if Madame Jemensa is so interested in giving the MPP a third term their works must show there are evidences when the fundamentals are strong, the people will give you another term. You cannot have a dollar of 17 cities to, uh, uh, to a dollar and say that you want a third term. Why? Not through the will of the people. And they, they, when you meet them, they just come back and you tell you are you talking about. It's the voters who will decide some of it. Yes. They, 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 so they when, make the decision yes, at, the voters at the will police decide. station. The voters will decide. And so any attempt to subvert the decision of the voters must be resisted. If the EC had nothing to hide, okay. why? Why would the EC say that but we should not observe? All right. But Arudali, going and taking a cue from where Beatrice left off will mean that the Electoral Commission then is up again the stakes in terms of public opinion. And should we be concerned about we that? We should be concerned. Um, views out there is that the Electoral Commission is at the beck and call of the ruling party. And that is not a good thing. Uh, Madame Jean Mensa must be told in the face that she holds the key to peace in this country by doing the right thing. She should do the right thing. She should make sure that we have a free, fair and transparent election. Asking um, CSOs not to come uh, or whatever is, I don't know, I ask myself, why is she stopping people from going to observe? Because these are the people who go to see things, come and tell us, you know, we, we don't expect your people to come and tell us because we, we, we don't trust them. So um, no matter how small a CSO is, if they have written for accreditation to observe um, the elections, I think they should be given observer status. At the end of it, um, Jim Mesa has not shown Ghanaians 
um, this whole thing up about her being trustworthy. Like Beatrice said, for the first time, as I sit here, I don't know the results of the 2020 elections because there were about so many figures coming out. And for me, that is not good enough. Um, for us to sit and also, um, I was reading through the uh, responsibilities and whatever of the EC, and I realized that it is mandatory for her to send not just one observer during the printing of ballot papers. But we were up, up told by, um, I think, the uh, NDC IT guy that they gave them one person, as if that person wouldn't go to the loo, and if that person... Well, that's for all the parties. Well, but it works for all the parties. The Electoral Commission said it worked for all the parties. Yeah, but now they've made it two. Why? It's always been two. That's the convention. It's always been two. So why, why, why even think about it at all, that you should give them one? They will not wee-wee. They will not eat. You know, if you're doing things to help the ruling party, please, use sense, common sense. Are you making a claim? I'm making that a claim. That the actions of the Electoral Commission... It is, 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 is aiding. Is give, is give, is aiding the NPP to stick on to power. That condoning and conniving. Conniving and condoning. Madam Rodolin, yes, is that what I you are claiming? Saying, that is what I am saying. That is what I am saying. Because you see, at the end of the day, I, I, I represent an independent candidate who cannot go to IPAC or will just have to go to IPAC as an observer. And I can tell you that that's, this particular independent candidate has gone around the country, has more following than those parties that we would call other parties that are sitting there making laws for us to go into this this election or be giving out their ideas you understand so i wouldn't understand why there are the, the, the ec itself knows that some of the parties that are in ipac for instance do not deserve to be there if you follow the rules and regulations governing political parties and how they get to be in ipac come on I have seen, I, 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 was in a <laughs> I was in a walk, and I, I turned back, I looked and I said, I wish one of those parties could get half of these numbers of people during a walk. But we don't even have you to say. the movement for change and yes. the alliance? Yes. You had so many people. I mean, I looked at the thousands, and I'm like. That you were wondering why I was wondering, some of the parties yeah, who, are there and you are, are there not there. And I'm not. I'm wondering. Why, really? Exactly. I'm wondering why we are not there. Why, why are people treating us as, as if we, we don't exist? You know, we do exist. So um, for me, the public trust is very important on the Electoral Commission. And she must live above all the noises that are coming from the general public. That she's not being fair and she seems to have an agenda, an agenda to rig this election for the MPP, which is wrong. It's terribly... Um, unpalatable for most of us. We don't want to hear that because we want everybody to accept the elections, to accept the results that she will be churning out in December. We want to be able to accept that. We don't want a situation where we will have go to court because no one is going to go to court. Okay. We won't go to court because we can't go for 7-0 or 9-0 or 12-0 because some people will just be put there to say I I I I and that's it. We won't do that. So for me... I think that they must give um, a hearing to the CSOs that have been asked not to come again or not to observe. They should be allowed to observe. Um, I'm also thinking that because of public interest in this, everyone who wants to be there should be given an accreditation to be there. After all, what do they do? Just walk around? You walk around, you observe, you ask a few questions for people, and that's all there is to it. What, what is she afraid of? Let us see some transparency going forward. She must be transparent in her dealings with all parties. We have gotten our voters register. We are going to look through it, but we've asked that at least they should give us a breakdown data on it, and we are hoping that she'll do it in good time, and we wish that she would accord us the same respect that she accords the two parties, that's the MPP mm. and the NDC. Mm. And yeah. Uh, it's because around the table we seem to be creating a certain atmosphere that oh the electoral commission is on a certain path and tangent and in tandem with the governing party and etc. Whilst perhaps it may not be, it may, may not be so. You see the electoral sh sh should that be our thinking? The electoral commission should stop causing trouble. It should stop being trouble. Yes, it should stop being mischievous and causing trouble. The trouble is too much. 
Do you get me? The trouble is too much. They should stop it. Jinensa should start acting like a leader. When she does her things, it doesn't look as if she, she, she's, she's on her own. It's as if somebody is behind the scenes pulling the strings. It is time for us to see her as electoral commissioner. Somebody even asked me a question that if Baumia doesn't win, can Jin Mensa announce anybody as a president, especially His Excellency John Dramani Mahama? That okay. kind of image is. Oh, how do you make? That is. These are questions. That's out a very there. unfair comment to me. Uh, these are these are, are questions out there. They had to leave it for the. These are questions why? out there. Why? That, why? Why? Yes, why? because of her posture, and the way everybody has said it around here. Why is she denying the CSO's observer status? You see, even I believe that, and I know, that even as an ordinary Ghanaian, you can apply to be an observer. Because of security reasons, you just have to need a tag to show that you're an observer. What is wrong? When the observers come on board, especially the CSO's, it brings neutrality. Do you understand? It brings neutrality. So you need to bring them on board. This is an election for our country and i don't see why you should stifle anybody who wants to be involved and i don't know what her problem is she and her team they should try as much as possible not to create any chaos because when parties are dissatisfied it brings trouble we will go for all these peace conferences the fulcrum of our peace <coughs> is around the ec so if the EC does not behave properly, then we are in trouble. You get me? We are going to elect parliamentarians. We are going to elect um, a president for this nation. One thing I agree with Ellen is that at this election, everybody should vote. If you vote CPP, vote for the CPP PC. If you vote NDC, vote for the NDC PC. If you vote MPP, vote for the MPP PC. So that it takes out this, because I have heard, I don't know, maybe it's alleged, but it is all around that um, the MPP MPs are telling people to vote for them and, I mean, vote for them as uh, uh, individuals. As individuals. Or as they make a choice for other candidates. Yes, they where, where are you here? That cannot be true. Oh, me, I, me, I don't know, but I heard, I don't know how far it's true. I, I can give you a list. No, please, 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 please. Okay, so I mean, with this kind of thing, it is certainly not right for this kind of information. And I agree with Ellen hundred percent that for us to get some um, stability, I me mean, for me, the hung parliament is not a bad thing, but how we manage it, we need to also have rules in the parliament regarding the hung parliament that in case to accommodate some of yes in case it happens again what are some of the mistakes that we did but typically it is not right for people to ask others to vote for them and vote for another candidate you stay within your lane so people who are voting for whoever vote for your president and vote for the pc so if you are voting for his excellency john dramani mahama vote for him and vote for the PC. If you are voting for Alan Chiamatin, vote for him and vote for the independent candidate. And, if, any, other and any other person. If you are voting for Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, you, you vote are, for him. We, we are voting for Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, vote for him. Do you get me? And vote for the PC. If you are voting for CPP, vote. So, so that there is some uniformity. Oh, so no, we want a hung parliament again, maybe. Do you get it? So if you want, do you see, it's we should not take out the the another occurrence of a hung parliament. So and it's we, problem and that it's, it's over. So we need to have regulations okay. regarding that. But as for the EC, to be very honest, eh, I thought that by now, uh, Madame Jean Mensa would have learned something. Ghanaians are not pleased with her. And she's a woman, sometimes I find it very difficult to talk about her. But there's also issues as if somebody is pushing her. Sometimes she looks very sad, very as if she's vulnerable. Sometimes mm. she looks like she doesn't want to understand, very, very stringent, very uh, um, hard. But whatever it is, the changes in moods, I don't know what it means. Sometimes she comes out as very angry. But whatever it is, she should understand that she has a lot on her head.
for this country to come together. She at this moment, hmm, for you see Ghanaians, eh, if you finish your eight years. They say that is democracy. When you, you, you go, you, you take the trotters and the taxis, they will tell you that, Madam, for us, eight years we are finished. Whether you do well or you don't do well, we are done. The voters determine that. Yeah, yeah that's, these so, are the so voters. It's not trotter people. They are the voters. The people in the trotter, who are they? Hmm? The people, I'm asking you, the people sitting in the trotter, who are they? They are the real voters. And I am saying that on that day, everybody should get up in the morning as early as it is to go and vote. You see, that day, nobody, I've said it, nobody can stay the execution of our camps to vote against the MPP. Nobody can do that. Not the EC. But all of us should be vigilant to ensure. I am saying that, you see, for instance, the breakdown, we need it. We need the statistics. For me to know that my Asoka constituency has 200 people on the poll. And so if somebody is monitoring, you will know that maybe um, 150 people voted. We should also have manual tallying. The agents should take A4 sheets. They do their tallying, but they should have people, even the observers, they should be useful. You don't just go around and leave. We should distribute ourselves. Me, I want to be an observer. I'm going to EC to tell them that I'll be an observer. And we should pick a white sheet. As the people are voting, you should be diligent and counting. Five people vote, you do your five and you cross. So that at the end of the day, you know that the register of 200 people, 150 voted. So nobody can come in. We are doing, the, you are encouraging people to flood the polling area. It is not flood. But when the counting is going on, People are there to observe. All right. Eh? And you have you can you can be within a certain perimeter. Distance, perimeter. Okay. And you'll be observing. You cannot say that. That one choose. is acceptable. Yes, you cannot leave it like that. For people to do what they want. No. Okay. Uh, Adib Sani, you are leading the coalition of civil society organizations who have been denied. Uh, Adib Sani, are you on the stream? I am for the past 30 minutes. Fantastic guy. Thank you for your patience. You are a man of many colors and great patience. You, so you that's want good. to boss me. You want to boss me, Roland. You want to boss me. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's been a while. Usually, Thursdays, we reserve them for our beautiful, intelligent women. So, but Absolutely. Okay. So just in f four minutes, why w were you denied? It, uh, because I'm assuming it doesn't include the established or the well-known... CSOs involved in elections like Kodeo, etc., right? No, um, it is independent of Kodeo. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, quite a number of CSOs applied for accreditation. As a matter of fact, for us at the JetK Center, we applied on the 4th of September this year. And um, we, you know, the salutations are there. <clears throat> we also stated the organizational objectives and past experiences, then special areas of interest. Then we also attached our uh, NGO uh, documents. As a matter of fact, we have been around the country. Uh, we've trained over 2,000 observers we, we wanted to deploy. Uh, unfortunately, the EC replied um, uh, rather simply, stating that I'm looking for the letter Okay, so according to the EC, <clears throat> this is the letter they wrote. Um, I bring you warm greetings from the Electoral Commission and trust that this letter finds you well. I thank you for your application for accreditation for election observation. The commission is unable, just a one-liner, the commission is unable to accept your application at this time. Kindly accept assurances of our highest regard. Uh, so it makes me wonder um, why, why the commission would deny us accreditation. No excuse was given. No explanation was, was given. Nothing. Just denial. And, and that's it. And the interesting thing is these other civil societies uh, that have been denied, one of them is CENCO, the Center for Conflict Resolution. Mm -hmm. And guess the person behind it? Uh, General Alot Kuenu, the first ECOMO commanding officer who, who intervened in Liberia. And they have been 
observing elections since 2008. They were there in 2012, 2016, 2020, and even the recent Asin North by elections, they were there. So what has changed? What has uh, Madame Jean Mensa got to hide, knowing how important civil society participation in our elections is? Because I am very concerned lately about the negative press about the EC. I mean, a lot of people expressing concerns about whether they are committed to holding a free, fair, credible election. So we thought this would have been a unique opportunity for the mm. EC, that is if they have nothing to hide, to prove to Ghanaians that, hey, we are transparent and we are committed to upholding the will of the people. And knowing the importance of civil society in consolidating our democracy, because we do accept the fact that uh, CSOs are a function of governors, they are a function of our democracy. Since the, fourth, the, the beginning of the uh, Fourth Republic, unfortunately, Madame Jean Mensah sees us as opponents and not partners. And I think that is dangerous, that is unacceptable, and that is irresponsible. So, Adib, her part, uh, uh, not Adib grant, have you gone uh, back to the EC to make inquiries as to why you have been denied? She had a unique opportunity to tell us why we were denied here. She had that unique opportunity to do so. So we have decided to take it to the media but surely we are going to write back to them because we need to know, are we a terrorist organization? Are we financing terrorists? Are okay. we not duly registered? Uh, do we, did we present fake documents? We need to know why. If that is, like I indicated, if the EC has nothing to hide. But Roland, I am worried because their action validates people's suspicions about what the EC is up to. I wouldn't want to be judgmental, but surely... This denial is a cause for concern, is a cause for worry for us within that space. And I hope that uh, she would realize that she has goofed big time and so the need for her to rescind her decision. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for that, that intervention uh, quickly. So, uh, um, Ellen, you, you've heard it. So it means what will be your clarion call on the EC then, just in a minute? Let me first... Um say that the EC is not in cahoots with the NPP mm. to rig any election. The NPP has done solid work and we know we are winning these elections hands down. So we do not need anybody to help us win anything. We know how to win elections and we are going to win it by, by, by a virtue of our hard work and the fact that Ghanaians want us to, to continue in power. And so for that to happen, as I said in my earlier submissions, we do not want any noise making and are looking for trouble when there's no trouble. Giving um, these CEOs the, um, the accreditation will not take anything away from the EC. Mm. And as I said, if they have any reason why they don't want to give it to them, when you wrote them the letter, you should have explained to them. We are not giving it to you, as you said, because you, there's something wrong with your, 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 your registration. Let them know. You just don't give people a blank, blank statement like that. It's unfair. They are part of, of, of the system. They are they're also Ghanaians or whoever they are, they have a right to do it. So let them know why you will not give to them. I'm sure they have given them the, 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 reason. the reasons. They will not be up in arms about it. And so they shouldn't do that. They should do their work. But then the MPP is doing this work. And the MPP has won elections with, even when we were in opposition. So if we are going to win when we are in power, we do not need the EC to do anything for us. The EC should focus and do their work and let us have peace and quiet. 23 days to elections. You know, we are all finishing hard. We are winding down on this matter. They mm. shouldn't bring in new matters when there's no need for it. They shouldn't create any problem. Uh, Beatrice, just a minute. What, what will be your clarion call on the EC then in relation to this very subject? Just a minute. I, I will not make any clarion call on the EC because they've demonstrated over the period that they are just interested in the MPP and nothing more. The clarion call I want to make is to the Ghanaian people that the EC cannot decide for you who your leaders are. The EC is only to facilitate your decision. And the Constitution mandates all of us to protect and preserve the Constitution. And civil disobedience is no crime. And so if the EC wants to hide under very omnibus and vague and verbose reasons by just saying that we, we can't do this, we will not do this, we are not mandated, you and I have a duty 
in our various polling stations to stand up to the EC and the electoral officers, most of which they even recruited some known MPP faces. You have a duty to make sure that the electoral processes are respected. You have a duty to police the ballot. Nobody can do anything to you. We have a duty to resist the oppressor's rule. And if that oppressor includes the EC, then we will resist the rule. But like I, told, like I said, the MPP came to us in North. Believing that because of the Reagan strategies they had put in place, they were going to win the Assin North election. I was in Assin North for the 21 days, never came home. In fact, they even brought caterers. Their level of confidence was that they even brought caterers so that on the night of the declaration, they will hold the party. By 8 p.m., the caterers had packed and they were going to Accra or wherever they came from. And we saw it, we made fun of them. Their only levels of confidence is not their track record. It's not because they have built a hospital for you. It's not because they have provided jobs. It's not because they have constructed the roads. Their confidence is that the EC will aid them to do that which will subvert the will of the well, people. It's and the you, MPP said you, they are not in aid with, with, the, with, with the EC. Ah, didn't the MPP say that before they appointed their party communicators onto the commission? How do you separate a party communicator from an election? So let me conclude and say that wherever you are watching me, the MPP does not, to be in does not deserve to be in power for 12 years. They have not shown why they have to be in power for 12 years. They cannot use eight years to destroy the nation and tell you that in the coming election, Baumia has a certain magic wand in any case. Maybe the EC is learning from Baumia. If they solve all the problems today, if they allow, all, if they allow all the observers today, who will they allow tomorrow? Uh, uh, that is the new but I'm, well, I'm, I'm only saying that the EC should be thinking of how to give us a free and fair um, election. And I'm hoping that we will not have any military presence at the place. Um, the elections are duties of the police. And sometimes they can bring in some few prison officers and the likes. But we don't want to see any uniformed army person around the, 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 the ballot boxes or in that um, area. We will also want to see the national security um, people outside of, of it all. So in this election, we are hoping that the EC will play its part and make everybody happy. You know, we don't want to go to court. A minute for you, Mania. You should see how Roland is moving as eh, fast, 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 fast. So we, we can't even think. Plus eh? another person, we five. can't even I think. couldn't even conclude. <laughs> I'm like, you have to ask that person at this time. <laughs> to clarify. And we don't want that person. So this give us time. Us. time. Give us our time. Because there is you. so much to say to this EC and the so, people of Ghana. So, so the, yes, give us time. We need it. <laughs> don't bring people in on Zoom. <laughs> Next week, I'll time. make sure that that is not done. Please, you have one minute. I promise. Okay. I've distorted your mind. The point is that that's it. I believe that every political party should empower their polling agents at the polling station. It is very, very key. If you have been assigned as a polling agent, you are going through training, I want to tell you that you need to be very vigilant. That is where the issue is. After the voting, Ghanaians are going to vote against MPP. There is no doubt about that. But the question they ask is, how are you going to police the ballot? And it is very key for us to do that, to make sure. And we should also make sure that nobody dies. We should make sure that nobody is shot. I am speaking to the IGP. Akufu Dampare. The CDS. The CDS, all the heads of the security agencies that they should ensure that no Ghanaian loses their life because of the 2024 election. Eight people died in 2020. Nothing has been done about it. I don't know whether there is even a docket to that effect. I don't know whether it is being investigated. We are in four years. Eight Ghanaian lives were lost, vanquished, destroyed. 
and nobody has said anything about it. Ghana is not going to forgive these heads if anybody does. Yes, don't look at me in that manner. We are very, very, very serious about it. Ghana is not going to forgive the heads, the police, the military, the immigration, whoever is allowed to hold a gun. We are not going to forgive them if anybody dies. So they should all ensure that nothing like that happens. This is our homeland, Ghana. Our nation must be made great and strong. strong. All right. Uh, I have a couple of messages. Let me just go to three and then uh, I have this one from um, Osai Mensabunsu from Ishaiso who says, uh, if you take a look at what has been done by the Ekufuado Baumia led government, it, it is a testimony of what money ha can do and has been spent. Yes, there are living standard issues, but if you take a critical assessment of the development across the country and the reception that Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia is getting, don't be surprised, MPP is winning this election. Uh, Sampi Yali says, I totally agree with um, Ms. Elendeko. Why should the EC exclude some CSOs? Why would the EC give foreign observers accreditation but not Ghanaian CSOs? What makes Kodeo etc. more acceptable than others? Uh, you wanted to say something? Mm. No, Kodeo, Kodeo is here. And uh, this one is coming from Chairman Prosper who says, Ask Madam Deoku whether they have cited free SHS numbers that says that upon fast check there are three million beneficiaries and not five million. It is from Fact Check Ghana. He said, "What's the official number for the free SHS beneficiary?" Five, five million. Okay, okay. So um, Chairman Prosper, I said that's the official number that she knows. And then, of course, we have a couple more messages. For those who have given us those messages, uh, we're grateful. Thank you also, ladies, um, for yes, your presence. We shouldn't do Zoom. Uh, uh, I will give you more time. Yeah, yes. rushing us. We okay, we so where are you going, where are you going to, uh, from here? I'm doing together. some, re um, I'm reaching out to a few okay, people. Just around. Yes. Okay, all right. Well, all the best to you. I'll be off. President okay. Mahama is in the Western <laughs> North region. <laughs> touring every Because I was just about to. Uh, Western so, where? So, Western North region. Mm -hmm. He started yesterday. Mm -hmm. And from the Western North, we head to the Eastern region. So I want every Ghanaian to look out and keep faith with the NDC so that we can make your lives better. Thank you. Thank you. Catch you, us in Northern region. Northern we region. Place, yes, and we are finishing Fantastic. up in Accra as well. So. We're, we're already in Accra, in our studios. Please catch us live <laughs> every hour. We're here. TV3 New Day. But in the meantime, we are bringing you a Beachy Tidings and Sandy Janomi. <laughs> That's Maha Beach Resort. So make sure you book two nights and get the third night free with all meals inclusive, starting from 6,000 Ghana cities for a couple. Package <laughs> offer guests free access to all in house facilities. And these facilities include swimming pools. The gym that's available, the cinema that you're going to enjoy with popcorn when you're watching the movies, board games, snooker games, etc., and entertainment. <laughs> you also get to enjoy free airport pickups from Takradi when you come on weekend. So the fun activities will also include a tour of the Maha Beach Resort, beautiful facility for golf uh, playing. And so they have a golf cart that is available, splash playground for children alongside other uh, playing facilities. And it, just in case you want to book them, you can try as many times as possible and make sure also you book and pay before the 1st of December and enjoy the 10% extra discount that is on this package. Call for your reservations and to avoid disappointment before the appointed date. So call the line 030 397773 or 050 1570684. You can also email the SM at maharesort.com or check them out on social media. You can cash out star 439 hash is where you get to win. Choose option two. All right. We're building up to that mega jackpot. So that's it. 
And when we do the draws, you also get money credited into your mobile money account. So we're taking a break. When we come back, we'll bring you the latest in sports right here on TV3 New Day. Stay tuned.